Good morning. Happy Friday. Pastor Mark Driscoll here with Prepare the Way Ministries. Hope that you're looking forward to a good fall weekend. Uh, hope that uh, you're aware of the presence of God in your life. And uh, we're here finishing up a series on Days of the Open Door. And we're in the last verse of that. We're talking about how God has placed before his church an open door, an open door to respond to him and to what he's doing in the world. Are you, follow, are you stepping through the door? Are you listening to his voice? So today we finish up on verse 13. Let's pray together and we'll jump right in. Father, thank you for your love and your goodness and your presence. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us through the night. Thank you, Lord, that your steady hand guides us through all the seasons of life and all the challenges of life. And thank you, Lord, as we're gathered here together, Lord, we can gather around your word. We can gather in prayer and stand together. Even if we can't see each other, we know that there are people all around us praying with us and listening with us. Lord, help us today as we step into another day to step in in confidence and boldness and faithfulness to you. Lord, you're the one that opens and no one shuts. You're the one who shuts and no one opens. You're the one with the key, the holy one, the true one. And we come before you today asking you to guide us and lead us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 through 13. John is recording the words of Jesus to his church. And we've, we've gone through almost all of it. And we've talked about how, first, we need to understand who he is. He's the one who holds the door. He's the one who opens up opportunities. He's the one in charge of, of every season in history. He's the one who rules over everything. He has the authority. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to the Lord Jesus. And he speaks to his church and says, Behold, I've placed before you an open door. And we talked about that. And then at the end, he says something that he pretty much says uh, when you read the gospels you see this in all of his parables or some form of it and, or and in here in revelation to all the churches he, he ends with this in verse 13 he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches now when jesus used to tell parables and he would tell a, a parable or a story he would often say he who has an ear let him hear. And, and the point of that um, was listen up. You've got the capacity to hear. If you're interested, if you're willing and open to what I have to say, don't just hear it. Listen to it. It reminds me of in Isaiah where Isaiah was told in his commission, go and tell these people, be ever hearing and never really listening. You know, there was a people uh, in, in Isaiah's day that were they heard the law every day. They heard the teachings of the prophets every day. But they weren't really listening to what was being said. They were like like we are sometimes. Uh, you know, when I, when I teach, I know full well that there are some of my students who are not listening to a thing I'm saying. They're looking at me. They've got their books open. And they're kind of nodding their heads. But I know that they're not listening. And then there are others who are listening eagerly. You can tell. Body language tells everything. You can tell. And then uh, in, in church on Sunday when I preach, I know that there are those who are more interested in, in what's happening outside than what's happening inside. And I know that. And that's just reality. That's just the way hearing goes. I know that sometimes when I'm in conversation with my wife or someone else and and I may be distracted, and she may be speaking to me about something really important, <clears throat> but I'm thinking about other things, and there are times I've caught myself just in la-la land while she's trying to speak to me, or my children are trying to speak to me, or maybe somebody at work, or I've been in meetings where I have just zoned out. I don't know if that ever happens to you, but I've been in meetings where I've just zoned out, and everybody's talking about something, and I'm just kind of, oh, 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 what, what were you discussing? And that's kind of embarrassing. Um, well, I believe that's the sense of what Jesus is saying here. Don't just be hearing, but listen. Listen in. And, you know, I, I think that was so important in Isaiah's day, and that was so important in Jesus giving those parables, speaking to multitudes of thousands of people, knowing that very few were actually tuning in and listening to what was being said. 
Did you know that the the Shema, which is in Deuteronomy chapter chapter four, um, you know Jesus. I mean, not Jesus. Moses says, "Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and with all your might." That word "hear," Shema, means listen up. Listen up. Don't just hear it. Listen to it. And as, as Jesus is telling John this message to the churches in Revelation, he's saying, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has says to the churches. Now, if you notice that John is writing to specific churches, but every ending he doesn't, he, he, Jesus says to the churches, plural. He writes to seven key churches, and, and primarily that's what the, the letters were for, but also it's for the church, and not just the church in the first century, but the church eternal, the church throughout the ages. This message is still going out to the church. All those letters to all those seven churches, the Spirit of God is speaking to the church. And I believe that in this hour, and in particular, and there are times when, when one thing will become a little more apparent than the other. They're all still true. They're all still word of God. But, but sometimes the Lord will highlight something and say, you know, and I believe at least for me and maybe for you, this, this passage has been highlighted for me. And I feel like he's saying, you know what? Listen up. Listen up. Don't just hear the words. Get it in your head. Get it in your heart. I'm speaking to the church. And I believe that we're in days when, when the Spirit of God is, is very likely speaking to the church. And he's saying, church, listen up. And are we hearing him? I want to ask you, are you hearing what the Holy Spirit has been saying to his church? Not just here, but as you look around at what's happening in the world, and you look into where, where the the word of God is being preached, and you look in the, the, the circumstances in which we live, are we hearing what the Spirit of God is saying to the churches? He's saying, first of all, remember who I am. Are you listening up? When he says, I am the Holy One, the True One, the One who holds the key of David, the One who opens and no one will shut, and the One who shuts and no one opens, our Holy Church, are we hearing what the Spirit is saying about who our Lord is? That's the first thing we've got to hear. He's telling us in this hour, this hour when, we, when we're often unsure of the future, when we're trying to choose leaders and we're looking at, at disat natural disasters and we're looking at our economy and we're looking at, at the church itself and how the church is moving forward and things that are happening, good and bad, in the church. When we see all those things, it's easy to, to, to lose sight of who the Lord of the church is. And we've got to back up and stop focusing on ourselves and thinking, well, it's all about us. You know, we, we've got to find a way to get people. And, and No, we don't. What we have to do is come to him. What we have to do is remember who he is. He's the door opener. He's the door closer. He's the Holy One, the True One. He's got the key of David, which means the authority of the kingdom. He's the one. That's why he told his disciples at the Great Commission, he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He didn't say I'm given to you, given to me. And, you know, if we really believe that, we'll pray differently. If we really believe that he's the one that opens the doors, he's the one that makes things happen, He's the one that, that reaches out through us to the people. He's the one that helps us to be the bride. He's the one. If we realize that, we'll pray differently. If we realize that, we'll preach differently. If I know, if I think I'm preaching and I'm, I've got to get the crowd up, fired up for me and I've got to use my personality to, to try to get them in and I've got to entertain them into heaven or, or shame them into heaven. I've got to find a way to maneuver people into heaven. Then I'm going to totally miss the point. But if I realize every time, for example, if every time I preach, he's the one opening the doors. He's the one preparing the hearts. He's the one bringing in the harvest. 
He's the one preaching the gospel. Then I just have to rely on him. I have to rely on him. I don't have to rely on myself or my own gadgetry. I don't have to rely on my own means. I, I, of course, I want to do my best. I want to give my best. But I don't have to scheme in order to try to get people into heaven. I just preach the gospel and let the door opener open the door. Let the one with the keys make things happen. Let him. And all of a sudden, my faith goes to him. You know, if I realize who he is, then I'll worship differently. I'll worship differently. When I go into church, I won't be checking my cell phone, my email, because I'm too busy worshiping the king, the one who opens the doors of eternity, the one who opens the doors of history, the one who opens the doors of opportunity. He's the door opener. He's got the keys. Now, if I go into worship and I think he's just the mascot for my denomination, then I'm going to worship one way. If I go into worship and I think he's just a has-been, bygone, f fragment of, fag fri <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> fragment of, fragment of history I can't say that word today of history I'm going to worship another way but if I realize that the Lord Jesus Christ the risen one the holy one the true one if I realize who he is suddenly my worship is going to change and you know what let me be honest with you I'm not going to care what style of music they're using I'm too busy with him I'm really not going to care I'm not going to care if they got fog machines and light shows in the sanctuary or if they don't I'm not going to care you know what I'm going to care about? I'm going to care about getting to Him. I'm going to care about worshiping Him and honoring Him. And I'm not going to look over the aisle and see if that other person is as holy as I think I am. I'm going to be too busy focused on Him. You see, I'm going to worship differently if I know who He is. So that's one of the challenges for us today. Hear what the Spirit is saying. He's the Holy One. He's the true one. He's the one with the power. He's the one that opens the doors. Everything changes when I realize that. And when I look at the news and I see disturbing things and I see things that cause me great concern, if I think Jesus is just uh, just a has-been, bygone trend from yesterday, then I'm going to worry myself to death over the future. But if I realize he's the coming one, he's the king, he's the door opener, I realize that nothing happens that does not pass through his hands first. I realize that he's in control, he's overall. I realize that all of a sudden when I watch the news, it might lead me to pray. It might lead me to act in a godly way. It might lead me to, to witness boldly, but it's not going to lead me to panic. It's not going to lead me to jump into cons on the conspiracy bus and try to uh, create more havoc by passing on conspiracies. No, I'm too busy with him. I'm too got focused on the gospel. You see, if I'm if I realize who he is, everything changes. And then the next thing he goes in to say is, I know your works. Wait a minute. He knows my works. Like I said earlier, that that's that's both the most comforting and most frightening thing in in there, in the whole passage. I know your works. And, and what that word know means, I'm intimately acquainted with your works. It doesn't mean I'm just aware of what you're doing. I'm intimately acquainted. I know why you're doing what you're doing. I know the motive. I know the means. I know the methods. I know everything about it. And I know all that's attached to it. He knows your works. He knows. He knows the tears you've cried at the night. He knows the prayers you've prayed in secret. He knows those deeds of kindness that nobody else noticed. He knows your works. But he also knows the compromises. He also knows the idolatry. He also knows the tendencies to stray off into our own little things. He knows. He knows. All of a sudden, everything changes. Are you listening to what the Spirit's saying to the churches? The Spirit's saying to the churches, I know your works. I know what's going on. I'm not out of touch. I'm not, a, I'm not separate from what's happening in your, your congregation. I'm not separate from what's happening in the world. I'm engaged. I'm not just observing. I know your works. I'm, you know, when he says, I know your works, I'm, I'm involved. See, to know in New Testament is to be involved. Not just to be aware, but to be involved. Isn't that great? I'm, I know your works. I'm not only aware of your works. I'm not only acquainted with your works, I'm engaged. I'm engaged. And if your works are works of darkness, I'm engaged in 
trying to pull you out of that. If I'm, if your works are works of light, I'm involved in helping it to bear fruit and to be all that you. He knows our works, church. He knows what, what's going on around us and within us. Church, are you hearing that your Savior knows your works? And the next thing he says, I've opened a door for you. Do you realize holy what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church? Is that he's opening doors of opportunity for his church. Even tragedy is an open door for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even, even um, political uh, confusion is an open door for the gospel. Even uh, economic problems and even all these kinds of things we're facing, that's an opportunity for the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Our Holy Spirit, church, the Spirit is calling us. He's placed before us an open door. We have such opportunity right now to stand up and be the church. And in so many ways, it's beautiful to see that, that, that people are doing it. I mean, I'm talking to people who are out there helping those who've been devastated by hurricanes and tornadoes. And, and there are church people crossing state lines, driving for hours, doing things to help their neighbors. And that is such a powerful testimony that's the church being the church and I, that's such a great thing and and so many people are praying and and praying i believe there's more prayer happening you know in this when when hurricanes are coming and weather is happening and things are more christians are praying than than used to be in engaged and and the, he not he sees that he's given us opportunity you know, and, and even in the political things, you're seeing people talk about faith. And I know you're seeing them talk about a lot of things and a lot of things that we shouldn't be talking about. But you know, there are some people stepping up and speaking of faith and the power of faith in the name of the Lord Jesus is being proclaimed even in that realm. And you're seeing in on university campuses, every, every couple of days I'm hearing about another outpouring of the Holy Spirit in a, on a campus in our country and I know that, that we're thinking when are we going to see the fruit of that you will see it but here it is and we're seeing those things happen in our world today and there's many other places where we're seeing things there are challenges too and I'll quite frankly we've seen some leaders get exposed for doing terrible things and I think that's also a work of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit is dealing with darkness He's exposing those things. You know, that's what the Bible says, is that, that light exposes darkness, right? And so when people are doing things in the dark, they've gotten away with for years. All of a sudden, hello, Jesus said that which is whispered in the dark is going to be proclaimed on the rooftops. And we've seen some of that too. And I believe we'll see more of that. I believe God is flipping the narrative. He's flipping the narrative about the church. And the church is, is, is in many ways, is rising up to the occasion. Other ways still needs to, and that's, that's what we just do. But isn't it great to know he has placed before us an open door? This is a time. This is a time for the church to be about prayer, proclaiming, and practicing. Can I just use the three P words? Praying, proclaiming, and practicing. And, you know, getting involved. And we're seeing people do that. Make sure you're doing what God's calling you to do. Jump in. If you're a Christian and you don't, jump in somewhere. Let God show you what he wants you to do. These are important days, important days. Don't get involved in vain conspiracies, really. Stop. That's not helping the faith. Pass it on stories that you can't back up and you can't prove. That's not helping anybody. That's just making you feel like you're busy. Get about the business of the gospel. I'll tell you a story you can tell. Jesus died on the cross, rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and he's coming back. Work on that story for a while. Listen, he's calling people to himself, and we need to respond to him. The door is open. He's doing things. Are you listening to what the Spirit is saying to the churches? He's calling us. He's calling us. Now, the next thing it says, I'm going to make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they're Jews and not. They're going to come bow down at your feet. You know, I really believe that there are people who have been attacking the church, attacking you, that, that in the right time, God's going to vindicate you. Church, don't worry about the enemies. Don't worry about them. Don't get all stressed out when people oppose you. You just keep doing the work because there's going to be a day when they're going to come to you and they're going to acknowledge that God was at work in you. 
those people that have called you hypocrite when you're not being a hypocrite. They've called you a charlatan when you're really not a charlatan. <clears throat> They've accused you of scandal. They've accused you of all these things. God's going to vindicate you. You just hang on and be faithful. Don't defend yourself. Don't try to clear it up. You just be about the business, and God will take care of that. He'll take care of the cover story. He'll make it happen. You just stay busy at his work. Stay faithful. And then he goes on to say, Listen, I'm going to keep you from the hour of trial that's coming on the earth. There, were, there are t hours of trial already. There are so many things happening that, that impact not only our nation, but other nations. And, and, we're in, and as we step into difficult times, as we step into difficult times, not that he's not going to, he's going to keep you in a bubble so nothing ever happens to you. But whatever comes, whatever happens, he's going to keep you, church. Don't let people think that the church is on its way out. The church is on its way up, not out. And I'm going to tell you something. The church is, is going to be his radiant, spotless bride. And so that's that's how he sees his church. And, you know, whatever's happening around us is not going to stop what God is doing in us. And I want you to believe that and trust that. Whatever's happening around you is not going to change who Christ is in you. He's going to take care of that. And the next thing is, look, he's, he's saying... Um, I'm coming soon. Church, do you hear that? I'm coming soon. I'm coming soon. And, and you stay faithful. Hold fast to what you have. Don't let anybody steal your crown of victory. Don't let anybody steal the victory that God has for you. You keep pressing in. You keep being faithful. Keep being true. Don't let anybody talk you out of what God has for you. And what God has done in your life. And whatever God, calling God's placed on you. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. You stay firm and you stand and you hold on. And let him take care of the rest. Listen. He's making you a pillar in the house of God. There's going to be a day when you're in his presence forever and ever and ever. Right now on this earth. The, the more you stay focused on him. The more his presence will be seen on you. This makes me think of Isaiah chapter 60 when he says behold deep darkness shall cover the earth deep darkness but his glory will be seen upon you I believe we will be in days when deep darkness covers the earth you'll see trial you'll see difficulty I hate to say it but it's true but I'm going to tell you what in those hours the glory of God will be seen on the people of God in other words people are going to notice that that who are those crazy people that are still walking in peace? Everything's going crazy around here, and they've still got peace. They've still got joy. They've still got hope. What is it with these people? There's something about them that's keeping them together. When other families are falling apart and your family is praying together and serving God together and loving together, what in the world is that? When everybody at work is about to lose their mind and you're just walking in peace, you're doing your job, you're staying faithful, and you're just walking in God, and, and you've got this peace that passes all understanding. People don't get it, right? And so you've got, what's going on here? And so And you see that, and people will see that. They're going to be drawn to you. It says that kings will be drawn to your brightness. I believe that people will be drawn to the people of God. When we enter into these difficult times, and we're already in some, when, when these things happen, we have to trust that God is going to bring people to us. They're going to be drawn to you because of your faith. They're going to be drawn to you because of your, your focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. They're going to be drawn to you because of the love of that, that's still happening in your heart. You know, Jesus said, because wickedness will increase, the love of many will grow cold. But don't let yours grow cold. Stay close to him. Stay close to the door. The one who's holding the door, stay close to him. And trust in him. I just want to, you know what? He's got a new place for you. He's got a new name for you. He's got a new level of closeness to you. He's making to you into a pillar in the house of God. You're going to be a symbol of strength and a source of strength for people around you because you're staying focused on him. This is what God has for you. And I just want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you and encourage you today, Christian. You keep standing firm. 
You keep praying. You keep believing. You keep looking to him. And he's going to make you a pillar in the house of God. He's not destined you for destruction. He's not destined you for wrath. He has destined you for glory. But it's going to come at a cost. There's going to be tough times. But you've got to stay focused on him. Are you hearing what the Spirit is saying to the churches? Church, let's move forward in God. Let's move forward together. Let's not accuse each other. Let's not undermine each other. Let's stand together and speak truth to each other. Even if you have to correct each other, let's do it in love. And let's walk in peace and in hope and joy and freedom. And let's let the world see. Let's let the world see who's standing by the door. God bless you today. Go in peace.